All right, good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing? Uh, yeah, it's Monday morning. I need a little bit more cheer. Not on a Monday. No? Can I get on a Tuesday? Yeah. All right, all right, okay. My name is Sohel Zachariah. I go by Zach. I'm part of the uh, Azure Global Black Belt team, uh, part of the Advanced Data Center Migration, focused solely on Azure VMware solutions. I'm here to, gonna, I'm a, I'm here to talk to you about the Azure VMware solutions, let me let Gaurav introduce himself. Yeah, hey, uh, um, um, I'm Gaurav. I'm an engineer at Microsoft. So uh, I work for the AVS Azure VMware Solutions team uh, and the engineering bits of it. Yeah, so Gaurav and I work very closely with, along with the other engineering teams. For the next three hours, not 20 minutes, just checking, <laughs> you guys are awake, we're gonna talk to you about the Azure VMware solution. We'll give you the use cases, some customer stories, and then if you want to learn more, right behind you is our booth, and we'll go really, really detailed around the actual solution, right? So today, uh, we went back GA with, a, with the Azure VMware solution back in March or April, and today what we offer is a bare metal environment. It's a three, three node minimum, right? So it's an Azure VMware solution that's a dedicated host that sits in the Microsoft Azure data center today. As part of the package that we have on the solution, we have, it includes the ESX host, your vCenter, vSAN, and today also as part of the ACX suite that VMware has um, announced, that's also part of the migration and part of the packaging. As part of the licensing goes, we also have SRM uh, that's available. If you're using any third parties, those licensings are all BYOL. As you can see, what Garab has put up here is basically you can look at the green components of the area, which is your on-prem VMware environment, and if you take that and shift that over to how it runs in Azure today, basically this is a bare metal environment that you're getting that's surrounded all part of the integration as part of Azure. So if you look at it from, if you go back a little yeah. bit. So if you look at it, if you look at the portal, you have your management layer that you integrate with. It's part of the integration. You can still use your VMware tools if you are very comfortable with using it. We're integrating other services as part of our Azure components. If you have any third-party software, Veeam, Zerto, et cetera, that's also part of the integration that you can also have. All these solutions, the VMware piece that you see right here, the ESX storage network, that all sits on the bare metal server, including the ACX piece. There's other integration if you're using additional third-party software that can also be deployed as part of your package and the VMware solution. On the other component outside of it, I want to talk to you a little bit about the networking pieces. There's three different connections. There's the express route if your customer has express route that gets that connectivity as well. You can use the same backbone. If you want to use site-to-site -site connection, we have customers that use site-to-site -site as well. So if you're using that, that's also available. And then VPN, normally customers when they're using VPN is only, only from a point of site or when they're doing some validation. Again, just coming back to it, when this environment gets deployed, it's a three node minimum. The first time you deploy it, it takes two hours. Every time you add another node, that could be another 15 to 20 minutes. That's how quickly and swiftly you can get this environment up and running. This is a first party offering. You go through your Azure portal, you launch it like you would be launching a VM, and you would just launch that service and create your private cloud. Go ahead. Here's the use cases that I'm running across, or we are running across today, right, with customers, right? A lot of my customers are either in their DC evacuation mode, they're either wanting a on-prem to DR solution in, in, in AVS, they're running out of capacity. I have a hospital that I'm working with right now, they're running out of capacity. We're working with them right now to open up, create a third data center as well. There's also contracts that are entering, right? So they're more getting outside of the physical mode and more into more of a, I want to say, a hybrid PaaS mode, right? As part of this solution, every day, most of the customers that we're working with right now are either in the scenario, whether they're migrating out of their DCs, whether it's a DR uh, strategy that they're looking for as, a, as an offering, and also, they need to get into the cloud, right? So think of it this way. Just because you have the solution, it doesn't mean you can't go to the Azure native services. This is all part of your journey. It's all part of your transformation. So these are just a few of the use cases. 
Later today, I can talk to you in more detail around the deeper dive around the use cases that we're working with customers on, on and we can also share best practices of what we're doing and how we're getting them there. So this slide right here talks to you a, lot, a little bit about the unified management. If you need privileges to deploy your third-party software, uh, your network layers, um, if you have Windows 2008, that's another key component that I should have, uh, that was mentioned in the use cases. So if a customer is running 2008 workloads, a lot of our customers are to take advantage of the security patches. They don't want to spend the extra dollars, right? They're going down this path to get in from their on-prem into Azure. That covers it. So now you're covered for the next three years from whenever the deadline was, you get your three years worth of security patches. They're not paying for it no more. So all that ROI is coming as part of that. If you're looking to install, you can get elevated privileges right through the portal. You can actually elevate your privileges if you're deploying Zerto or Veeam or any other third-party software, SRM, right? Site Recovery Manager. That's all part of that VMware suite. So you have that opportunity as well. The other piece I want to talk a little bit about is around the unified management. You still get the look and feel. Like I said, you can use your VMware tools. However, we're integrating as part of the Azure portal. So now you can reboot, you can manage your VMs within the Azure portal without going to your vCenter, or et cetera. However, that's all part of the unified management. It's part of the DevOps story that we're also integrating. A little bit more around why customers are doing it, right? We touched a little bit on that, right? One of the other aspects is that we're running with customers right now is, and I'll talk a little bit about the modernization. Everyone wants to modernize, whether it's PaaS or they're getting into the cloud, right? Again, imagine not understanding all your dependencies. Imagine understanding your legacy situations that you have right now. This helps, right? This solution helps. We can help U.S. West regions as well as West Europe. We have six other regions that are lighting up between this quarter and early quarter next year as well. If you need more details around the region availability, again, we can talk a little bit more about that. We have that available, that information as well. But the GA regions today are in US East, US West, and West Europe. Yeah. Rob, you want to touch a little bit on this? Yeah, thanks, Soil. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, with this, what AVS enables you to uh, have uh, the ability to uh, uh, use the VMware tools that you have been using so far. You can uh, um, use the same set of tools, HCX for migration, uh, SRM site reliability of VMware for, you know, uh, for your DR needs, uh, the vSAN component that you already know of. You can use the same set of existing tools for all your needs. Uh, uh, even with going with the Azure VMware solutions. Uh, um, second point is integration with Azure. So with Azure, um, what you get is integration into the uh, Azure services ecosystem, which enables you to do uh, stuff such as the analytics part or the AA part or uh, the monitoring stuff. So uh, you can very well have monitors and alerting configured wherein Azure will take care of your monitoring needs if something you know goes down the hose Hell, heartbeats are not received and things like that. It enables you to do a lot more stuff uh, by uh, having you leverage the set of services what Azure has onto your AVS. Um, and um, um, apart from that, the ob obvious is the, uh, the, the trust and the scalability and the performance what you get with uh, uh, having your, uh, for managing your workload. So all of that is, uh, everything is, uh, the, the VMware stuff as well as the services of Azure is integrated in the AVS solution, uh, empowering you to do a lot more with your le rather than your VMware da uh, legacy data centers. Yeah, good point. Just to double click a little bit on that, right? So a lot of the customers that I'm working with today, right, whether they're using Azure Monitor for their Azure native uh, workloads or Azure Security Center, et cetera, right? Those are all the different integrations and the, the, the look and feel and the integration that we're bringing in as part of the solution, which is very important. It doesn't mean you have to use it, but it becomes available for our customers, right? So we're listening, listening we're taking that input in, and then we're also integrating those kind of services in as well. 
Uh, for instance, just to add to what Sohil said, you can very well, uh, for all, uh, for your, say, for your backup need, you can uh, use the third-party solutions that you have been using for your VMware um, traditional data centers along with AVS. Or for instance, uh, you can very well leverage the same set of third-party solutions what you have been using for your uh, disaster recovery or your migrate needs. Uh, uh, the same set of third-party tools can be leveraged and be used on your Azure VMware solutions. Yeah, just a little bit more, and, and I want to mention this. Currently, when I said three regions were available, the nodes that you have available are three types today. CS28, you, we'll share that details with you, CS36 and CS36M. 36 represents the number of cores. We have 512, 576 gigs. CS36M is our latest SKU with about maybe 15 or 16 terabytes of data. I'll get you the exact specs back there, but we can share a lot of that details with you as well. Um, a little bit on the last uh, slide that I want to uh, mention is that we're working with, um, hold on one second, yeah. So today, and I'm going to give you a little story. I've never seen this in my life, or maybe, you know, something new is how Satya and the, how Microsoft is changing, right? Our, I've never seen VMware and Microsoft and the customer in the same room. I'm sitting in VMware EBCs today. VMware, VMware teams are working very close with us, with our customers, to help integrate these solutions. And it's really important, because it's a first party offering, and we're working together around this, right? You are, you are we are the single point of, of contact. So if there's an issue, you don't have to call VMware. If there's a challenge, you don't have to call VMware. We triage it in the back end. We contact VMware. We contact any third party uh, pieces that are surrounding you as well. So VMware is part of this solution as well. So it's a really a win-win uh, story. At the same time, these are the things that are, are, are helping our customers accelerate much quicker to the cloud. I hope you enjoyed the time today. I want you to enjoy Ignite as much as possible. It's going to be a great week. And if you have any questions for us, we're here up at the stage. We'll also be at the booth all week this week. Thank you very much. Thank you.